This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. Second half chaos unfolded for the football cats against Southern Mississippi. And now the question is how that gets fixed before going to the swamp on Saturday. After the five first half touchdowns Kentucky scored, they could not score any more. But that is mostly because Southern Miss had the ball for most of the half. The Cats ran just 14 plays and everything unraveled. A missed opportunity at an interception. Drew Barker's fumble and a gassed defensive line. When stuff goes haywire, you have to learn on, lean on your technique and your assignment. And that we don't always do. And, and again, that's what I was just talking about, about pointing out to the guys in front of the whole team. You know, when you have an opportunity to do something and make a play and you don't, I mean, that, that's just not excusable. You know, we're, we're playing in a high level of competition and we expect you to make those plays. And if we're going to go to where we need to go, we need to do it. All right, 1979 is the last time Kentucky beat Florida in the swamp. They will have a shot this Saturday, and you can watch the game on WYMT 3.30 kick time. A big week upcoming for the U-Pike football team. The Bears are coming off their first ever home win over Campbellsville and are now getting ready for Division I opponent EKU on Thursday. Head coach Al Holland Jr. knows his team is a big underdog against the Colonels, but the only mindset he wants is his players to have that they can go on and win in Richmond. You know, just like any other thing. I mean, whether it means you're sitting here playing marbles, I'm, I'm going into it to try to win. And, uh, you know, that's the same way whenever I was at Eastern, we played UK. I'm going into it to, to try to win the ball game and trying to get our kids prepared to give them, put them in position to win a game. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's the only way you're going to have success in your program. If, if you don't go into it and thinking that you're going to lose, you're not going to be very successful in life. All right, announcer our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week, Hazard and Somerset will play their fourth game of the season Friday night. Hazard sits at 3-0. The Briar Jumpers are 2-1. Solid midseason matchup that will provide a playoff atmosphere at the Briar Patch Friday night. The Bulldogs will try to start the season 4-0 for the first time since 2010. But win or lose, this is a good measuring stick of where both teams stand at the moment. They have a lot of uh, their backs. They're like power backs and all that stuff, they're really strong. So we gotta make huge tackles. We gotta make good plays on like the on the scrimmage, on the line of scrimmage. So that's gonna be tough. Every year when we play Somerset, we know they're gonna have one of the best teams on our schedule. And uh, it, it's just a really good game for us. I think it kind of gets uh, both teams uh, warmed up for playoffs and uh, we got a lot of respect for each other. And uh, it's just, uh, it's gonna be a great, great football. All right, we got a 7.30 kick time on this TV and WIMT.com Friday night. Somerset comes off a loss to Class 1A Power Beachwood. Hazard comes off a close four-point win at Letcher Central. All right, let's announce our Team of the Week from Week 2 of the high school football season now. In case you missed it at 6, it is the Belfry Pirates. They once again induced a running clock doing so last week versus then number 10 Harlan County, the Pirates beat the Black Bears 47 to 13. Noah Corbett accounted for three total touchdowns, two rushing, one passing. Belfry is on the road this week at Newport Central Catholic. 15th Region all a Classic Volleyball going on tonight out in Floyd County. A couple of quarterfinal games on the schedule. Let's get to it. Paintsville and host Betsy Lane is where we start. Quarterfinals of the 15th Region all a Classic. Opening set, a strong start for Megan Taylor. The sophomore just hammers it home. Had a big week last week against Johnson Central. The two teams would split the first two sets. Let's go third set. Presley Cherico gets set up by Abby Mead here. Cherico a little punches it over there for the Paintsville points. But here comes Betsy Lane. Megan Frazier, one of several kills on the night for her. The Lady Cats within three. However, Paintsville is able to hold off a late surge as you see the game Set right there as the Lady Tigers advance to the semifinals, two sets to one. All right, Paintsville gets the winner of the nightcap, Shelby Valley and Phelps, second game of the night. The story of this match, at least for the first sets, were aces. First up, Shelby Valley, one of three consecutive points for the Lady Cats. The Lady Hornets come back with back-to-back -back points. Mackenzie Bentley with an ace to pull Phelps to within one. And you got Krista Thompson with an excellent placement just inside the back line for Valley. The Lady Cats sweep Phelps two sets to nothing and march on to the semis. Tomorrow at 6, we'll release our Player of the Week from Week 2 of the high school football season. That's sports, and we'll be back.